Hi there. This is going to be a little how-to video. Uh, maybe not as detailed as it could be, but good enough to give you a start. Um, when I decided to do this little tackle this little project, I didn't have a whole lot to go on, and this uh, something like this I think probably would have made it a lot easier. Uh, what we did here is we installed a DC-powered water pump to our fresh water tank. Um, what was on there is this pump here, which is a dual action pump. It sat right here, was, or was mounted right here. You ran a garden hose, which was your city water on the outside. You lift it up, the water would come out, and you'd have a nice steady stream of water. Put it down, it would shut it off. The other option you had is there's a fresh water tank, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which holds, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 gallons, I'm thinking. I'm not sure exactly on the number. The other option you had was to manually hand pump it by lifting and lowering this lever, like such. You would pump what I thought was pretty much about a quarter cup of water every pump. Not horrible, but not really what you want to do on camping, especially if you, you're in a hurry and you want to do, you know, a, a quick, you know, handful of dishes or brush your teeth or something. It's just, it'll work. It's fine. But uh, it's always nice to bring some of the comforts at home, such as running water whenever possible, since you're giving up already so much. Um, but hey, we're one with nature. So this is where we're at. Underneath here is our area where we have our fresh water tank. I've put some of the other stuff back in there already. Let's so pull it out of the way. It's a potable water hose for the city water, a little drainage hose for when we're the hooks to the to the drain of the sink. And of course, our miles of electrical cable for shore power. And while I'm at it, invest in one of these if you could. They're not real cheap, but it's a 30 amp extension cord. Sometimes when you pull up to the campsite, you're not quite close enough. You've already set up camp, you put down your jacks, your, your stabilizer stands. You've raised it, you go to plug in and find out that you're way too short. And you're not about to crank that thing down and pack it back up and try to move. So you go on a, uh, a rat race chasing down a power cord, an extension cord. Not that easy to find. Get yourself one of those. It can save you a lot of time. So there it is. There's our DC pump. It's a SureFlow Revolution three gallons per minute DC operated water pump maintains a constant pressure of 55 psi when it feels the pressure within the system it turns itself off it can be run without water not that you would want to do that but should something happen you run out of water and you don't know about it um, or you know you, you just it takes a while for it to to prime itself you not you don't have to worry too much about burning the thing up. So we bought this pump here. I got it for about $44, $46 delivered to my house. Uh, RV shops are gonna try to show you sell you these for about 90 to 100 bucks out of your RV stores. Wait a few days, order it online. That would be my advice. So we started off, we put in uh, this little one by six board, supported it down below to create a nice level surface to mount the, the pump. Went ahead and desanitized the tank, got that all done. First thing we had to do was tie into it, as well as install a switch, because you don't want the pump just running. You gotta have a way to turn it on and off. <clears throat> so what I did is you got your red and your black. Come over here to your AC converter and to be honest, I wasn't sure 
and I seen white and blue. I wasn't really sure what my red, what my negative was at the time. So I found another DC operated device and just follow those wires back. That's what worked for me. If, if you know, if you happen to have the schematic and you're very familiar with electricity, it uh, perhaps won't be that big of an issue for you, but for you. But what I did is I followed the red and black that was already going from a DC unit and spliced in with a red wire, a red wire, and a black wire to give myself the positive and negative that I needed to run my pump. I then poked a hole into my uh, side of the panel here and installed a LED lit uh, rocker switch, DC rocker switch, has to be a DC switch and at least uh, 10 amps or more uh, so as not to weld the contacts together. <clears throat> I came out with my red wire, went to my in side of the switch. You know, all these switches are going to have different wiring diagrams to show you how to do it. You're going to have an in or a power. You're going to have a load, which is the red wire coming red wire coming back out of the switch. And you're going to have a, a ground or your negative, which is going to tie in down there and on this particular switch on the bottom and run itself off onto to the, to your motor. And that's how I did it. And uh, I went ahead and cinched it up with some wire ties to make it all nice and neat. Uh, 16 gauge wire is a recommended gauge of wire, stranded 16 gauge wire. That is what I used, sorry for that. And uh, once I found where I was going to mount the pump so that it would work and be out of the way, I went ahead and spliced in with some butt end wire splices, real simple. Um, these little hose fittings come on there. I suggest putting a little bit of texture Teflon tape on there. There was already an existing hose right here that connected back to the sink for the hand pump. And I had to buy a purchase a little piece of hose here and connect that and run that down to the bottom of the tank there for the water uh, out. Which uh, is actually the in water into the pump, draws it out, pushes it through that hose up to my sink. The way this works, you flick on your LED switch, lets you know you've got power. You've got juice, you're ready to pump some water. <clears throat> now, back to my pump issue. When I first installed this, I was trying to get away with just using this. Like I said, this is just good for the city connection as well as hand pump. There's uh, air trapped in here to create the vacuum and pump. So, you know, when it's, it won't work the same. Um, you got two connections here, one for your city, one for the fresh water tank. You, um, it won't work like a regular faucet because like I said, it's got to have some air in there to create a vacuum. So when I would turn on the DC pump, it would just flow on through there. Uh, because there was nothing to stop it. So one option was to buy a triple action pump or faucet which allows you to hand pump water, run a city line to it, as well as connect a uh, DC water pump. That There again that's 60 70 bucks. not really sure if you need it. So for 20 bucks I got a regular old faucet. One side I go for my city water line, the other side comes to my DC water pump which is connected to my fresh water tank. So we got power. Here we go. Here we go. Nice steady stream of water. You can barely hear the pump running. You can see it's not really shaking around or moving a whole lot. Pretty quiet. I mean, I don't have the board on or the cushion, so just being wide open, it's pretty quiet, I'd say. I'm pretty impressed. Turn it off pump shuts off. It fills the PSI, trips the switch inside, and turns itself off. When you're not in the camper, I would suggest turning the power off. You never know when you're going to spring a leak. You never know. So I turn that power off. Last thing you want is a pump running crazy, draining your fresh water tank, and putting it all over your nice camper. So hopefully this helped, and uh, go ahead and leave some comments.
Take care.